to this incarnation of The Fold, the festival. My name is Kat Germain. I'm your audio describer for this improvised um, uh, audio description. This is going to be a 30 minute presentation from 2.30 uh, until three o'clock. And I'm not sure what we are in for this afternoon. Previously, the feed was divided into nine rectangles. The center rectangle showcased the speaker and the other eight were feeds from Vancouver, Winnipeg, Toronto, Kingston, Montreal, New York City, Halifax, and London, UK. And within each of those rectangles, there were more rectangles within, uh, representing, or not representing, showing each of the speakers and what their screens were showing. Uh, so I suspect the beginning and the end of this performance will probably offer the same visuals. And I suspect, uh, so I believe that the way today is going to work is each of those cities is going to have, you know, three to five five minutes for their presentation that I believe they started working on just today. And when, when those are being viewed by the audience, then they will take up the full screen. The time now is 2.27 and I will join you again when we're, uh, when something's happening. On screen, the green rooms, the earth, the earth is watching, let's act. On screen text, closing act. There's a little circle rot rotating uh, as if the screen is loading. The backdrop is a brick wall with a door in it, a door frame, but without it, there's no door. Beyond the door is a uh, clouds, possibly sunset or sunrise. There are pinks and purples and oranges. At the bottom is a strip of green. So possibly it would represent where the sidewalk would be and the lower uh, few rows of bricks. Time now is 230. <laughs> It seems that we're going to, uh, I say this loosely, hold the house for a moment while the teams take a few more moments to get ready.
while we're waiting, a few more details of the on-screen image. Above the door, it says stage door. And to the side, it says, oh, I'm not sure if everybody's a privy to that image. <laughs> there was a few uh, test, test, test at the side. On the top left of the screen is a small indicator that we are live. And on screen are nine rectangles. The, the rectangular screen is split up with nine rectangles. Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back if you were with us um, yesterday Hotel and speaking. Wednesday. My name is Chantal Villadeau. I am uh, a co-curator of The Green Rooms. Hi everyone, I'm uh, Sarah Garden Stanley and I'm also a co-curator co for The Green Rooms. It's really great to be back for this final gathering on the third day of uh, the Green Rooms, um, The Earth is Watching, Let's Act. The Green Rooms are produced by uh, English Theatre at the National Art Centre and presented by FOLDA in collaboration with the Canada Council for the Arts, the City of Kingston, the National Theatre School and HowlRound Theatre Commons. Yeah, the city of Kingston have been a, a really um, steady partner throughout this whole adventure. And in fact, initially, we thought that we would be many of us here on the ground um, in Kingston, in Cataraqui. And so it makes perfect sense, as it always should, to acknowledge that we are on uh, the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, and the Huron-Wendat. Um, it's a, a real privilege and a pleasure to be able to make work here. And I personally happen to be here. And as Chantal likes to say, Mission Control also happens to be here. Although another big part of it is, uh, is in Ottawa on um, Algonquin Anishinaabe territory as well, unceded territory. So uh, we're so happy to be here with you all today for this closing act. This is the last day we had a series of conversations. Yesterday we had a dance party, we had a big opening picnic on Wednesday, and um, we just before we move to our final act, actually, we want to reflect a little bit on what we were hoping to accomplish with the green rooms and um, where we got to. So, um, of course, uh, it, it had to change along the way uh, because of the COVID pandemic and not being able to gather in person. Um, so as it changed, one of our big goals became uh, how, how do we gather when we can't gather in person? Um, we also wanted to explore the role and responsibility of the theater in addressing the climate crisis. Um, and uh, another goal that sort of evolved along the way was how can we highlight um, the different uh, separate issues that are social issues that are actually manifestation of the, prob the same problem? How can we look at them together? How, we can, how, how can we see how they feed um, to work, to how they, they feed on each other and how sometimes addressing one can actually help make all of them better. And uh, along the same lines, uh, we wanted to respond to the current moment. Yeah, it's really um, still quite clear in my mind, the feelings around that week, um, March 16th through to sort of the 22nd and a, a feeling of paralysis and uncertainty as the 
uh, news about COVID-19 um, really started to uh, flood um, all of the stations, all of the airwaves, all of the, like, the internet. It was just everywhere and sort of a, a sense of paralysis and, and unknown about uh, what the future would be. What, what would June 10th to the 12th feel like, look like? And I, um, I know that Chantal and I spent quite a lot of kind of bug-eyed moments kind of looking at each other Similarly, <laughs> on computers as we are now, but um, really wrestling with how to how to keep the question of this climate crisis as part of all of the other concerns and um, and uh, fears that we were confronting at that time, and then of course um, uh, very recently um, the incredible um, upswell of protest and and clear thinking around. Um, um, white supremacy and uh, anti-black racist kind of actions and needs for change in terms of structurally and personally, interpersonally. And so how to think about um, the questions of the climate uh, amid this moment as well. So it's been a, 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 an, an unbelievable um, privilege and also an incredible uh, challenge, I think for us in the best way, um, along with Sophie Trobe, um, our associate curator and the curatorial team who have been so hugely supportive in trying to understand how best to um, keep space alive for all the different ways to apprehend and consider this question of the climate crisis that is so very, very present amidst all of the other questions that we as uh, in North America in particular are, are really dealing with um, right now. Um, so Chantal, where did we get to? <laughs> well, maybe, you know, we should be asking, <laughs> but um, I mean, from our point of view, we had some really difficult and honest conversations, and we hope that what you can take uh, with this is uh, different perspectives on how to think about the climate, the climate crisis. There's not just one way of approaching it. There's not, it was said over and over again, it's not, the impact is not the same across the board. You know, different people are impacted differently. And um, it's, it's good to keep in mind uh, these different perspectives and these different realities as we move forward. And another thing we hope you get is um, good food for thought about where we can go from here individ individually and collectively. So as we were uh, building towards this moment, we approached a, uh, a number of artists, a uh, wide, wide gr ranging group of artists, um, to ask them to consider responding to this question of, uh, of climate change. And um, we'd really like to show them to you now. On screen text, we asked a bunch of artists to respond to the question of climate change right now. The following artists responded to our ask. Ani, Corey Ndishnikovs. My name is Corey Payette. Um, my background is OG Cree First Nations. And I'm the uh, artistic director of Urban Inc. I'm a playwright, composer, and director uh, based on the unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations on um, Coast Salish territories in Vancouver. East Van. Um, he looks away. And this uh, time that we're in has shown me that we are capable of enormous change collectively. And so witnessing what has happened around the world in this time has actually given me a lot of hope for the climate change movement. And that if we can make this kind of radical change right now uh, towards this crisis, then we can make that change. Uh, as it relates to climate change. Um, and so I'm not deterred. Uh, I am, I feel hopeful that the possibilities of change seem closer to me than ever. How, how I feel climate change. 
Deborah Pearson. Looking out over a balcony, we do not see Deborah. I don't think it has. I think we need to change everything. But I've thought that for a while. And this has been a painful way to find out. We look down. Uh, uh, ASL signer, my name is Landon Krentz. He signs. On screen text, I am a theater artist from Calgary, Alberta. The COVID-19 had a negative impact on the theater communities across Canada. In particular, I'm especially concerned about the deaf theater communities because we, deaf people, have already struggled and do not have conceptual, excuse me, uh, our, several of my artistic opportunities have been canceled. However, when one door closes and another opens, we will break through. I have noticed that most of my work are more digital, creating new works, building stories, and other opportunities. Therefore, it's vital that I remain connected to my deaf community and feel a sense of, of belonging. Marcus Youssef, I'm a playwright and theater maker based in Vancouver, British Columbia. And I think the best way to kind of illustrate how the pandemic has changed my relationship to the climate crisis is uh, in house. showing you this. This is my uh, travel and tickets email. Computer uh, screen. When I've taken great secret kind of egotistical pride in for about a decade. It's got every single itinerary for every bit of travel, mostly work, occasional pleasure, but mostly work over the last 10 years. First one is a canceled car reservation in March. And then it's every single travel I've had in 10 years. He scrolls through emails on a computer. Which I'm doing anymore. Uh, most of them flights. Hello. Hello. I'm Mary Vingo. And I'm Laura vingo Grant. And we're related. Catch tell. I'm a director playwright. And I'm a theater director. Okay. We're both based in Halifax, Nova Scotia. For me, uh, coming out of this pandemic, one of the things that's really changed for me is I can hear the bird song. I, I've gotten to know a cardinal in my backyard and we meet every morning. And I could never hear him before because of the traffic. And so the fact that there's been this slowdown, it's been a ray of hope. Uh, it's made me think that maybe we can stop driving so much, we can stop flying so much, we can eat more locally sourced food and give the planet a break. This pandemic has really given me space to think about who I am in society. I think as an artist, I was doing that, but um, before I was always, it was a constant rat race to cobble together a living um, from various different uh, contracts and employment. And now with the CERB, I have $2,000 regular a month to actually think You're about. Four months. For four months. I know it's going to end, but I actually have time to think about um, things a little bit more deeply and, um, you know, exercise 20 something democratic right and getting more involved, uh, signing petitions and writing to my MP, all things that, you know, I was sort of doing before, but now I really feel. Are you going to keep doing them or are you going to keep doing Yeah. Well, I wonder if like, again, have I started a new habit. So that's yeah, good. Starting a new habit yeah, uh, on the darker side. Uh, of course we have lost so many of our elders during this time. The speakers, late forties, early fifties conditions in the long-term care um, facilities. Laura and I have had some exposure to those long-term care facilities. We know how stretched they were before this happened, and now, of course, they just crumbled, and it was an accident waiting to happen. Uh, willful blindness on the part of all of us, I guess. We all have to take responsibility. So that's something that I'm hoping will come out of this. We will, the same willful blindness that has left us with climate change has left us with this nightmare and um, hopefully we'll come out seeing a little more clearly about what's really important and valuable to us as a society on this very fragile planet yeah they look at each other nod smile at us my name is Yvette Nolan I'm a playwright living in Saskatoon right now 
I she sits outside. I acknowledgement for a short play festival in which the character enumerated the things that the pandemic had done for the earth. Fewer planes in the air, fewer cars on the road, fewer ships in the seaways, whales swimming freely, foxes on the boardwalk in Toronto, bears everywhere. While we, the creatures who are responsible, are on a timeout, you just sit there and think about what you've done. I'm thinking. I hope the people with power are also taking the pause, taking the opportunity to rethink how we go forward. It's too late for some things. We're never going back to the way it was. April was the warmest April ever globally, in spite of the timeout. So we must adapt. But the pause, the pause has shown us that we can, if we must. My name is Adrienne Wong. I am a parent, an artist, and artistic director of Spiderweb Show Performance. She sits outside. Alberta. I find myself thinking about how quickly the world, the Earth, its waterways have uh, restored themselves, I don't know, without all of our economic uh, consumer activity um, in this pause of the pandemic. And I'm also thinking about how many sweeping, sweeping changes have been put into place um, under the rubric of protecting us from this pandemic. And so I know we can do it. I know we can do it. We can make these changes on a large scale. It's just a matter of doing it. Thank you. Hello, greetings from Beaver Creek in Treaty One territory on the shore of beautiful Lake Winnipeg. My name is Debbie. Now for me, climate justice and disability justice are kind of like this, because at the core of ableism is this belief that the hands together. beings value is based on our ability to work or earn a living or produce things. And that same kind of thinking applied to the land leads us to see the land merely as uh, valuable for the riches it is able to yield up to us, right? And so right now we're in this moment where human well-being is perceived to be more important than human productivity. And we're all freaking out because our internalized ableism is rearing up and going, well, who am I if I'm not producing? And what value do I have if I'm non-essential? And if I can't work, do I even exist? So there's this like desperation to keep working in any way we can to just keep producing stuff. And I mean, like, like look at the lake, like it's perfect. Right now, it's not yielding up its fish. It's not transporting our goods. It's not even a playground for our canoes and kayaks and motorboats. It's just sitting there. But it has value and purpose and meaning and presence. It's magnificent. The lake behind her is very calm. Hello, my name's Elspeth. I am in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and I teach and produce creative practices. Before lockdown, we were working on a biting satire of unsustainable consumerism called Desperate Antics by New Zealand playwright Kevin Keyes. We That's tried right, to place behind her. Radio play, but when we glimpsed everyone's private lives via Zoom, it turned out that there are massive disparities between who does or doesn't have good internet or a safe space in their home to cre create work. Lockdown floodlit inequalities, and yes, they fell along racial fault lines with Indigenous and migrant households disproportionately affected. Despite show performances. My own privilege and better grasp the inequality that had been right under my nose all along. Now protests. My focus to well, obviously that is dark has been on developing robust evaluation measures for inclusiveness. We need to measure not only CEDA's contribution to climate action, but the interrelated areas of race and gender disparity. How inclusive are we really? Evaluation is not the fun part of creative work, but we are going to need Back in the theater. it more than ever if we are going to be able to keep working on the things that matter. On screen text, with thanks to Corey Payette, Deborah Pearson, Landon Krentz, Marcus Youssef, Mary Vingo, Laura Vingo Cram, Yvette Nolan, Adrian Wong, Debbie Patterson, Elspeth Tilly. Back to the 
nine uh, rectangles on screen, Sarah and Chantal in the middle. Hello and welcome back. Sarah uh, speaking. Eric Garten Stanley, one of the associate curators here in the green rooms, and I'm joined here in this space with Chantal Bilodeau, the other um, co curator of this green room. So uh, we just wanted to take a second to talk about um, some of the people in uh, the videos that you just saw, and in particular, uh, Elspeth Tilly, who ended the um, range of videos. Uh, Elspeth is from Wellington, um, New Zealand, at the um, Massey University, and um, she was a huge supporter of the earlier iteration of the green rooms when we were actually going to be on the ground in eight different spaces, and one of the locations was going to be um, uh, in, uh, in her theater space. Um, so it was really wonderful to be able to somehow bring her here to be part of the, uh, the closing act. Um, and, uh, and we listed the names of all the people on the cards, uh, at, on the credit card at the end for um, all the people who were able to contribute. And we're so grateful for those thoughts and uh, the time that they took to do that. Uh, for the closing act, which is upcoming, uh, we asked participants and facilitators in the eight Zoom rooms, which represent eight cities from across Canada, London, and uh, New York, to create um, something for you. And when we say create, we largely mean improvise. It's um, a five to seven minute response to the highlights and questions and themes that have emerged over the last two days. And we've also asked Matt Rogalski, whom you can't see, but it's been very much in the background and who you've heard so much of his sound um, supporting us through this uh, three-day adventure to provide some of the sounds um, that will be joining us in this closing act. Um, we're really excited to share this with you. Um, we're really grateful to uh, the participants for being game. Um, and also, uh, we're very inspired by so many of the thinkers um, and speakers and uh, right from starting with our keynote on the first day um, with uh, Ariel Deranger and, uh, and, and right through to uh, the end of last night with uh, Donna Michelle St. Bernard and um, Jordan Tannehill, just a range of, of incredible speakers, which of course always kicked off um, uh, by Knowledge Keeper and uh, uh, Georgina Riel, artist, community builder, um, Georgina Riel, who will be joining us to close at the end of the session. Um, we've been so inspired and in particular, uh, I was struck, and I think we've all been struck by many different things, but I was struck by when uh, Dr. Jennifer Atkinson spoke about um, how to overcome grief, or not overcome, say she said, let's sit in it, how to work with grief is to act. And so that in part inspired um, our thinking about uh, having a closing act. Chantal? Uh, very well said. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, the closing act is, um, you know, we worked on it briefly before this, so it's as much of a surprise for us as it will be for you, and we hope you enjoy it. On screen text, closing act, uh, superimposed over the brick wall that is beside a doorway that above reads stage door, and through the doorway are uh, pink purple and orange clouds as if they are being lit by a sunrise or a sunset. Around this are eight different uh, screens, each representing the eight areas. Uh, they're all doing different things and within those rectangles, everybody within there are doing different things as well. Top right corner uh, is predominantly a person's hand very close to the camera. You can see their knuckles. It's not a tight fist, but a fist. Hello, I'm Tara Wright and I'm from Halifax. Hello. It is unclear who's speaking. Hello, my name is Anika Riopel, and I'm here in Helen. Hello, my name is Drew Lashier, and I'm in Halifax. Hello, my name is Drew Lashier, and I'm in Halifax. This is the bottom 
left hand side of the corner or the screen. As the soundscape seems to be continual, I'll describe some of the visuals on the screen. At the bottom, the group there uh, are bent arms doing motions in front of their faces, some similar to swimming. On the bottom right corner, the three people there are moving very close to their cameras and moving back with large smiles on their faces, moving up around going counterclockwise on the far right center section. Uh, there are several uh, words that people have written. Uh, one says, computer and performance allow us to model a new approach to a sustainable and just world. Several more screens now are, are showing words. Top cent uh, Now top right is change as hard as we've been made to believe. Is our local cultural survival connected to the global survival of our planet? What work do you need to do to create the change you want to be and see? Which action can I implement today to move towards positive change? Will it be enough? Can universal basic income, sorry, it's gone from screen, I can't read it anymore. Can I move from an ego system thinking to an ecosystem thinking? What will I need to teach the children in my life? The visuals of the handwritten notes continue to show across the screen, some of which or many, most of which I can't read. They're either very small or they're quite light. Will you do the work to remove your I can't read it. How can I hear better fully? How can theater makers serve neighbors using practices of community self governance, self governance to mend ecosystems? Our classes teach a lot of sad things. Can we keep checking in? This is the community we've created here. Build meaningful relationships by showing up and doing the dishes. Perhaps the structures we live in. Build meaningful relationships. I don't trust listening. Revolutions are long and they're messy. This is going to be a long call. I just want to make sure that we do it right. What structures are limiting our listening? Scientists need us to be artists to bring emotions louder. The classes don't address all these factors. Um, yes, yep. I do. Jennifer Atkinson. Okay. All right, and go ahead. we're going to move to the uh, big room. Keep it up. Keep it up. Right. Thanks, folks. Here we go. Uh, let's go to the uh, other room. Okay, and now good. we're going to transition to the exactly. All right. Satisfying this room. All right. A series of photographs cycle through the center screen. I believe these are all people who have been involved in the Folda Festival, Aaron Ball, uh, Donna Michelle Bernard, Sophie Traub, uh, man in a forest, gentleman with a, a white hat, uh, white presenting woman with curly hair, uh, headshot of a person smiling, uh, LAL, the duo musician group with uh, face masks, Mark, uh, Marcus Cyrus Ware, Sarah Garden Stanley. These photographs continue. <laughs> I was just going to contact her and see. Murdoch Sean, 
This is the keynote speaker, sits in front of a window with light colored uh, curtains, smoke billows, wisps in front of their face. They reach to the side of their camera. They wear black framed glasses, long black straight hair with a little bit of uh, white gray framing their face. Smoke gets slightly stronger. So as I did in the beginning, I introduced myself to you in my traditional name. It means white bear woman. I am from Batuan First Nations of the Chibos, which is located in Sault Ste. Marie. But I've been in residence here in Kingston for the last 18 years. And this place is called Gadarakwe, which is known as a gathering place, which is very fitting for what we've been doing for the last three days. So as we did in the beginning, I always start off in a good way. And I start off with the sludge. Because we're going to show, we're going to share some good words to close this wonderful festival. They take off the glasses, put the smoke near their eyes, their ears in front of their mouth, waft it over their head. She picks up a feather. Looks to the sky. What I did is I made sure that I put the feather down. My eyes, my ears, my mouth, my nose, and my arch because I'm speaking in a good way. This was an extremely fulfilling um, three days for everybody that participated. I'm very grateful to everybody that was the host, everybody who spoke, everybody who shared messages in the chat rooms. I'm um, especially grateful to the partners. Um, the hosts, the people who are behind the scenes, uh, Chimi Glitch, uh, Matt, for that beautiful uh, ending video that you provided. We shared so many words. Um, it was, as I, I mentioned before, this was one of the most stripped down, raw conversations everybody had. And I think personally, it's because if we're not in a room together, we don't feel as vulnerable. And I think it's really interesting that as artists, we find ourselves, we do find ourselves in many situations where we are vulnerable. And then sometimes that's when our best work comes out, is when we let ourselves get to that space. So as we walk very carefully on these ancestral lands, as we talk about the various subject matters, in particular climate change, and how it affects us on a personal level, how it affects us on a daily basis, that we must be mindful that our ancestors are watching. For me, my ancestors are the ones that are rooted in the ground, the ones that are in the air, the winged ones, the ones that are in the waters, who are the fish. We are also given thanks to the creature crawlers that are in, in, the, in the earth, but also to our four-legged ancestors and us humans. So as we gather all of our thoughts today, there were some significant words that I wanted to point out um, that was shared in, in many things. And it was brought up uh, multiple times about oppression and racism and systemic and climate and the environment and the fiscal responsibility that we have. At the end of the day, whether we are professionals or living our daily life, 
we must be responsible, not just for us here in the present day, but for our future people who we must keep a very healthy and safe and clean earth. That's our duties. So if we were in person at this point, I'd always say, you know, look around and let's give thanks to the people who are here with us today. And however you came to this gathering place that I know it's got a lot, I ask you to walk carefully, to give thanks and appreciate each and every one of us. In my heart, in glitch, which means thank you. But I say big thank you. And I saw this during the video and I saw beautiful hands sharing up. So I give big thanks to everybody that participated over the last three days. Thank you, Rich. She waves with both hands and smiles. Looks down, purses her lips. There are now about 25 small rectangles in, on screen now. Each person is in their own uh, uh, rectangle. And now superimposed on the brick wall, it says, thank you. This is Kat Germain, your describer for today's largely improvised performance and entirely improvised description. Uh, there are still some more happenings for the Fold the Festival. There is one this evening with critically acclaimed blind artist Alex Balmer. Her show is called May I Take Your Arm? And you can find it by going to folda.ca slash accessibility. There is, I believe, uh, an audio described introduction to the show, but the show primarily has audio description embedded. It's integrated audio description. And yeah, sorry, to find it, folda.ca slash accessibility. And thank you for listening this afternoon. I hope you enjoyed the show and I hope you enjoy the rest of the Fold Festival. Once again, this is Kat Germain. And if you have any questions or comments, you can always email, email me at kat, K-A-T, at katgermain.com. That's K-A-T-G-E-R-M-A-I-N.com. Have a great afternoon.